I've been noticing a lot of videos as of late where folks are doing these follow me through the store videos and I've noticed some great gaping holes in what they show you. So I've decided to spend a little time this this week in spite of being sick as a dog. Thought I'd go out and see about getting some footage and show you what I'm talking about. So you hang around until after the intro, and we'll start off with the first, we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go take a look at what Home Depot has to offer for preparedness supply. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to go in here to Home Depot. I'm already in here. And we're going to take a look at what supplies there are to be had to add to a survival kit. Now I'm not going to belabor this a whole lot. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on stuff I've already seen other people cover. But I will gloss over it. Starting in the barbecue section, we got grills. We've got the uh, roasting pans. Supplies to go with propane. And of course utensils. But, this is not all there is to be had. We've even got chimney starters. Well, let's see what else we can find that's of use. And primarily stuff to go into a bag to take with you. Yes, you'll notice I'm riding one of the little carts. With my gimp leg, I can't do much else. I certainly couldn't walk around this place all evening to show you some of the stuff that a lot of people have had that they've missed. So I'll bring you back when I find something that I think somebody's missed. Okay boys and girls, here we are in the axe department. And you got your pick. You got the fiberglass handles or wooden handles on the small hand axes. You've got, uh, now I wouldn't consider that a pack axe, but it could be useful if you have a place where you need to do some digging. Now that bad boy's $16. Wooden handle axe, $18.97, 19 bucks. Same for the fiberglass. Uh, the only advantage I see in fiberglass over a real wooden handle is weight. And the trouble with fiberglass is it's more difficult to replace the handle should you break it while you're in the woods. With a wooden handle, you can make a handle and replace it. And down here we've got, oh goodness, we've got splitting axes. We've got single bit axes. I don't see any doubles. That's what I carry in my truck as a double. Uh, the singles run $20, I guess it is here. $19.97. The splitters. Uh... Well, I don't see a price on them where they're sitting, so uh, I certainly hope it wouldn't be uh, 30 some dollars for a splitter. Anyhow, that's four and a half pound head splitter. Here you got a fiberglass handle, $30. And then uh, up here you have what they call a grub axe. And that's going to run you 30 bucks with a fiberglass handle. And then here's one even Cody, Wrangler Star, would love, I think. That's a fireman's axe. <laughs> well, it's a type of fireman's axe. This is the kind he would probably be using out there on the fire line. Also 30 with a fiberglass. You got splitting wedges down here. I've never used this type. This appears to run about $13. And I've been using these my entire life off and on. And they run $12. Let's go see what other kind of trouble I can find. We've even got leather gloves. $11. There we go. I didn't get very far. That could be quite useful. $16 for a mini diggy easy pick. What else have we got down here? 
Eh, yeah, a little hand hoe. Other gardening type tools, nothing I'd be interested in myself. Yeah, these are mostly little hand spades and such. Speaking of spades, let's see, what else have we got here? We got uh, postal diggers and pitchforks and... Oh, here we go. Here's something that I've seen a lot of people skip right past or not do. Shovels. Here we've got a nice pointed shovel. Six dollars. With a long straight handle. They run as much as, well, let's see, there's 15 bucks and 16 bucks for names. That's probably a fiberglass handle. There's one wooden handle for 22 so. You know what they say, you get what you pay for. Talk about knives, cutting edges. There we go. Husky folding razor knives with extra blades. 788. Let's go see what other trouble we can find. How's that sound? Boys and girls, our next stop is going to be here in the paint aisle for methylated spirits, aka denatured alcohol fuel. Now, you all heard of using uh, meth fuel for your alcohol stoves. It burns a lot cleaner, it doesn't soot the way uh, isopropyl will. This is what we're talking about. You can buy it in a gallon. You can buy it in a quart. Seven sixty-four for a quart. Sixteen seventy-seven for a gallon. And that seems to be about the best price they've got on it, right there. I don't see any other versions. Of the alcohol here other than the clean strip brand well let's see what else trouble I can find how about buckets take your pick those are uh, look like two and a half or five gallon or even these orange ones which are five gallon these are 297 the lids are dollar 78 those are in fact food grade buckets uh, and we get down here 468 for the white or 398 for the two and a half gallon buckets. Now why buckets? Well, how about for water purification, turn them into a filter. I'll see if I can find the filters I'm talking about elsewhere in the store. My way looking for water filters and what do I find? Zip ties up the wazoo. Here we go, we've got a bag of 11 inch cable ties, 500 of them, $22.94. That ain't too bad, I guess. And here we've got the all white ones, $22.94. And of course, smaller packaging up above. Okay, I'm not going to waste a lot of time on tarps and drop cloths and the like. Okay, I'm just going to quick stop and show you. Here you got the PVC aisle. And everybody knows that the PVC used for making caches. That's pretty obvious, and there's all the fittings that go with it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, like I said, on stuff that have been covered uh, in ad nauseum. I'm going to try and cover some of the things that I feel have been left out by others. So my next stop is going to be in aisle 11 here in this particular store. I imagine it's pretty much the same in Home Depots across the country but it's part of the tool aisle. And this is something I noticed uh, a couple weeks ago when I went looking for one. This is their, well, if you want to call it stationary section. And what's the one thing we like to have from the stationary section? It certainly isn't carried at Walmart. How about a worksite notepad right in the rain? $8.98 for that bad boy. If I remember correctly, they had other stuff here, other sizes, when I was last in here. But apparently they've all sold out. Oh, no, they do have. Okay, here's the top spiral bound. And here's the uh, side notebook style. And let's see, the field notebook, that'd be this bigger one. Uh, that's $16.98. And I'm sorry, I can't tell you how much this little uh, loose leaf spiral bound is, top bound. 
notebook. But I'm sure there's a price here for them, and I'm not going to go to a lot of effort hunting it. Let's move on a little bit here. Because there's another thing here that I wanted to show you, if I can figure out just where it was now. Okay, how about carpenter's pencils? Those are useful. But there's something else here I wanted to show you. Oh, there they are. There was one inside that container with the carpenter's pencils. But you can buy them here a la carte as well. That right there. Nine, I believe it's, is it 97 cents? No, these are $1.99. Now, I've already gone ahead and picked one of these up. Yeah, it's just a pencil sharpener, but it has a much bigger opening. $1.99. Yeah, I know. Everybody shows you pencil sharpeners at the Dollar Tree for a buck for ten of them. The trouble is the opening in those pencil sharpeners are so small, you can't get anything bigger than a standard number two pencil into it. But imagine a sharpener big enough to get a carpenter's pencil into it. You could do a lot in the woods to make tinder with that bad boy. And that's why I've already picked up one of those for myself. $1.99. How about a multi-tool? $28 for a wingman? I can't believe that. It's apparently on clearance, regularly $89. Ow. If I had the money, I'd buy one. Let's move on, see what other trouble I can find. How about, uh, let's see, screwdrivers? No, I don't think you'd need much of those. In the woods. Claw hammers, those might be useful. And of course, these run the gambit on prices as well. You only get what you pay for. How about a double bid handheld war axe? 40 bucks. Isn't that a cute looking bad boy? Let me get up there and get one of those and take a closer look. Oh. Brother, it's not easy being laid up. Oh. Okay, how about. Boy, wouldn't you love to sport one of them bad boys in the woods? And, well, we'd have to spend a little time on the edges, but it even comes with a cordura sheath. Not bad. I may come back for one of those one of these days. Uh, now, everybody recognizes this style of hawk. And it's got quite a rubber coating on the blade, which tells me it might just be sharp. Let's, ouch, take a closer look here. No, it's kind of sharp, but not really. That's an East S-Wing. And that is, that's also $40. Uh, nah, wouldn't have a whole lot of use for that. Here's a $30 little axe. And I imagine this is going <laughs> to, ain't much of an edge on that bad boy at all. And then, of course, that's, like I said, that's 30 bucks. Well, let's move on. How about chisels? Chisels are always useful. Uh, you never know when something like that will come in handy. And, of course, a cat's paw, $15. Those are very useful to have in your kit. Here's an axe. Too bad it looks too much like the hated... Uh, Oh, uh, jigger there. Um, yeah, it is. It is. It's a hated Fiskers. Okay. More cat's paws up there. Let's go see what other... Hey, boys and girls. Here's a pair of gloves. The Gorilla Grip. Four ninety seven. And this place is closing, so I need to start getting out of here. So, we'll talk to you later. How about... 1 16th inch cable for making them snares everybody loves to talk about. How about 26 cents a foot or a 500 foot spool for 107? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't think I'll be buying a, 100, a 500 foot spool 
but I will be adding some of that to my pack one of these days very soon. Uh, but I think I'll also be adding some of this 330 seconds as well. That's 30 cents a foot. Because I tell you what, this is nice for smaller things, coyote size or smaller. But some of the stuff I like to trap for definitely requires a little bit heavier. Now I know they say snaring is illegal in just about every state in the Union. Well, if we come down to a matter of survival, you'll use any means necessary to take a bit of game. And that 16th inch, well, it might or might not handle a deer. But I'd be willing to bet this 330 seconds would in a heartbeat. And when combined with a deadfall weight of sufficient size, you string a deer up in a tree with that in a heartbeat. I might even suggest some of this plastic coated cable for just such type traps. See this? 31 cents for the 16th inch plastic coated. And I'll bet you that would hold up a lot better in a snare situation when paired with a deadfall of sufficient weight to hoist your critter into a tree. And just for the record, I prefer the deadfall to the spring trap for fishing. Because, uh, honestly, uh, spring pole will wear and take a permanent bend after a while. Whilst we're here, how about cordage? Garden jute twine, green. Jute twine, oh, sisal, excuse me, sisal. In uh, neutral color or natural color. Here's the jute in uh, what they call uh, natural color. This is your fire making material. How about a really big bundle? Well, uh, there's the label. Uh, okay, sisal rope. 2,250 feet on that spool right there. Now, that's not a very big sisal, but it would make good fire cord. Now, everybody talks about Mariner's Bank Line because it's tarred. It's so good. Well, yeah, I imagine it probably is. But it's also expensive. It's like 9 to $15 a roll. Well, how about a roll of, see if I turn it around here correctly, this is poly and poly blends, mildew and rot resistant, easy to knot, twisted mason line. You know what that is? That's basically the same thing as uh, Targ Mariner's line. I'm not sure if they carry the Targ Mariner's line in here or not, but... Nylon, nylon blend. Okay, this is uh, 521 for... Okay, this is 250 feet, number 18. Number 18 line. That's about the same as number 18 bank line. Versus this back here that I was just showing you a minute ago. This is 425 feet. It's 7 something. 7... 777 425 feet of number 18 so I mean there you go and here we got 800 feet of number 18 it's 848 now that beats the hell out of the prices for uh, targ line and 225 feet that's a small spool number 18 297 you know let's you can't beat some of these prices with a sharp stick. Here's 225 feet in bright yellow. You can get it in white, bright yellow, or orange. And 200, well, I don't see the orange in the 225 feet, but I do in the 425. I don't see the orange in the 800. All I see is the white. They've also got a spool of 1,050 feet. 975. That's the same as the number 18 
bank line, price-wise, for uh, what they call a one-pound spool, which isn't nearly as much. Here we go. Uh, twisted mason line, number 18, 215 feet, on a handle, 597. And that's for the small spool. The bigger spool, this would be the... Um, I think that's the 800 feet. Let me see. Uh, 425 feet, excuse me. And that's 997 with the handle. Hey boys and girls, here's a pair of gloves. The Gorilla Grip, 497. And this place is closing, so I need to start getting out of here. So we'll talk to you later. By the way, don't forget to...